Go. Whoa. Guess it's time to reset, huh? Yeah. Focus on my goal, pursue my personal legend. I realize what I'm worth and I finally come to collect it. Into rap music, because when I first got into rap music, it was through ICP and Twisted. Right, and, right. And it sort of branched out from there. Well, well like, it, you know, that's the, that's the thing with music. You know, we all got to start with some artist or start something. It's definitely very therapeutic. You're, I like your style because you don't limit yourself. You might have started listening to whatever, like me, I started listening to old school 90s fucking G-Funk and all that, Tupac, Snoop Dogg, Nate Dogg, all that, but it grows. It grows, bro. We're influenced. For me, like, I started off, for those who are in here that may not, you know, know much about me, I grew up listening to, like, old school... 70s and 60s rock and metal music. The first band I was into was Kiss. You know, that was my That's dope. thing. You know, I went and seen them in concert the year I started kindergarten. That's fresh as fuck, man, because not very many people can say that. And like I tell people every time, that's where my shit started from. My parents, classic rock, oldies, all that shit, that's in my blood. It wasn't until I got like to be 9, 10, 11 and could steal my ten my brother's teenage brother CDs and shit that I was like, whoa. And then I started to watch MTV and shit, even stupid shit like TRL. And, I, and for those of you who remember that, and I was like, damn. And then Eminem for the first time came around. I had, I had fucked with ICP long before that. But then I saw the crazy shit go, get more mainstream. And I'm like, damn, this shit's fucking nuts. What got me into Eminem was ICP. Ironically, because of their beef, I heard about their beef that they had years back, and I started to, you know, sort of listen to both ends, and I started listening to more Eminem. Through ICP, I heard of Tech Nine. Cotton yeah. Through Cottonmouth Kings. Tech Nine, I heard about Hobson. Hobson. Out from there. And there's still more. Honestly, I give props to Ouija Mac for people who like him and don't. He's out there killing it. He's got his own lane. He's still running with the hatchet. He's got a brand new... He's able to capture the hearts and minds of the younger guys. Now, me, I'm 30 fucking years old. So, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have newer elements to my music, but, like... You know, I, I want to be able to capture all crowds. I ain't going nowhere. I'm very fucking young, and I'm very determined. And before I fucking get too far, shout out Yeti. This guy is my number one producer. He produced my whole last album. He's constantly making beats in the fucking place to be. He makes the shit that we hear these days. Now, my earlier shit was made through someone else who was dope, but Yeti's a new level. Like, between me and him, y'all, are you're going to see dope. And wait till y'all see his new rap. Dude, there's so much shit in the works, you guys. Videos, his project. I got a couple projects. Like, just, uh, you know, I ain't go nowhere. Sometimes we all just need a month or two to decompress. Yeah, that, that was basically me, especially the past couple months, because when you were talking about your couple months away, I was like, yep, I feel them there. Because I had to have a couple months away because I was trying to really push hard more on the interviews and make it just interviews and not, I, I got to where I didn't want to do the reactions anymore. I, like, I was so yeah. tired of them. Like, I was like, the, the interviews are fresh and dope. That's just, like, so played out on YouTube and all that. And I'm just like... Yeah. Mix it up, dude. Your interviews, honestly, I think I like your new format. Interva interview the up-and-comers, interview the vets, interview anyone you can, and it's just going to get your name. You're, you're one of those people. You have a good energy. No one's going to interview you for five minutes and be like, yeah, fuck this guy. You listen, for one, and I talk a lot, so that's a good thing. Well, you listen, and uh, you don't interrupt, and then... Uh, you have good questions. You have good input. 
You have great things to say. The beautiful Jamie in the chat. Gotta love her. I like to make it more like it's like two homies just having a conversation, but oriented towards an audience. Exactly. This is pretty much no different than me and you talking, just me and you alone on voice chat, FaceTime, but there happens to be a handful of people watching, which is dope because I want y'all to fucking come up. I want y'all to maybe get some free merch, get some money, fucking check out the new projects, be able to ask for one, ask me some motherfucking questions. There's so many questions that I see in the grapevine. It seems like some people don't want to upset me by asking them, but I'll put my shit out there. Like, you know, let's go ahead. We're going to, I'm going to light up the fattest wood I, ro I, I rolled earlier. This is like a fucking four gram fucking backwood. Let me give you a little background to Tommy James, all right? Just a small one. Take it away, homie. So, basically, my life, bro, if I died right now, for one, I'd have no regrets. For two, I've seen, been a part of, witnessed so much good, but at the same time, so much bad, it's made me who I am, and I can never take that back. And I don't want to take it back. But here's kind of where Tommy James takes his dips in his rise to recoveries. It's happened. I'm in the music business. Drugs are a very heavy part of studio life, rapper life. Not just, don't get me wrong, much love to all all my marijuana smokers this is what i do i smoke marijuana and i take edibles i occasionally have a beer or something like if i want to date if i'm trying to get a little bit you know uh you know loose i might have a drink other other than that you know i have some medications i'm prescribed more or less so i don't like have a seizure and i have nerve pain but nothing crazy no opiates Try and stay away from benzos or have bad panic. A lot of people have panic. Bottom story is, is I've been I've been gone through my battles with alcoholism, man. I've woke up in different states with people I didn't even know, wondering what the fuck did I do last night? Like I ended up at a party two states away, not knowing how to fucking get home. Fucking uh you know, crazy shit, bro. I wait, sleep, wait, sleep in behind gas stations, you know, plus all the drama that comes when you're drunk all the time, fighting with friends, family, loved ones. I just, I, I low-key, and I needed to have a drink before I could even go to work. I, I couldn't fucking function. Now, th we're talking like 15 years ago, guys, you know, 10 years ago or more, but I lived in Vegas, so it was easy. I get off work, and I always like to drink before that. But I get off work, get a pitcher, get the shots, smoke a little weed out back. I'd be feeling real good. Um, uh, <clears throat> nothing wrong with being an alcoholic. If you can drink every day and handle your life, more power than to you. This story I'm telling now, this is about self-control. I have poor self-control. I love chocolate cake. If you put a whole chocolate cake in front of me, I'm going to have a hell of a time just eating a slice. I'm going to eat pretty much the whole cake and make myself sick. And then everybody's going to be mad because I ate the whole fucking chocolate cake. This is my life. Now, this gets a little deeper, obviously, than alcohol and chocolate cake. Since I've been diagnosed... With nerve pain, I have a crazy ass neuralgia in my neck and back. Feels like I'm being fucking shocked and stabbed and crazy shit. It's like fibromyalgia, but it's neuralgia. But anyway, uh, I've had to deal with this. I smoke weed. Weed is my painkiller. I, I smoke a lot of weed, too, and a lot of really good weed because it's the only thing I can really do that's not going to bring me down a bad place. I've been in bad places, man. Um, not so much, some, so much recently, somewhat. But here's the main deal. I've been in active opiate addiction and benzo addiction because I, I like to mix both because I like to get super slump, feel super good, you know what I'm saying? Like like this, like, ah, yeah. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd be falling asleep on stream. I'd be looking like this with one eye open. And, like, people aren't stupid. People are like, Tommy James is slipping. The motherfuckers, you know, I've had people claim that I'm a junkie. I've never shot needles, but I'm definitely guilty of popping perks, Zans, sniffing up the blue sand, fentanyl. I ain't gonna lie. I am not even gonna lie to y'all. But this shit taught me a lesson. A little bit of an off and on battle. See, when I was a 16 year old kid, it was normal. We used to go get 100 milligram, 60 milligram morphines and pop them and go to parties and fuck our bitches for three hours straight. And like everything was great. Like there was no problem. But you get older, your body gets dependent. And, and and this was nothing that was even every day. It, there was one time when I was, I think I was 18. I'm 30 now. When I was 18, I didn't have any morphine. And I felt like shit. And I'm like, am I sick? I thought I was sick. I didn't know what was wrong. I talked to a friend. He said, bro, you're withdrawing, buddy. He's like, you, you, you take morphine multiple times a week. You don't have any now. I'm like, really? The morphine's doing this? And he had some. He said, bro. Take this, take one, you're going to feel like you're, nothing happened. And he was right. And then from the moment about 16 into my 20s, now I have lots of sobriety. I have two years of sobriety, three years of sobriety, no cigarettes, no pills, always weed. I never fucking quit weed. It's the only thing I can have, damn it. But anyway... Um, I, it's, I've definitely had monkeys on my back and this is something that's in my music and something I want to preach to people. Now I've never been a big upper guy. Have I done Coke and meth and other stuff? Of course I've done Adderall speed, you name it, but I have bad anxiety. That shit makes my heart go like that, go like this. I can't sleep and I uh, get, I don't like that. I like to sleep. I like to get stoned. I like to eat. I like to sleep. So anyway, uh, long story short, you know, I've had two years fall off the wagon, and I'm not going to give you a bit of excuse that, oh, my, my uh, family member died and I just couldn't take it. No, sometimes addicts just get fucking bored. We're in relationships that are bringing us down. We don't like our job. Fuck it. I'm just going to get high. I'm not going to lie. Where I'm from, that shit's too easy. And fentanyl's everywhere. And I don't want to die. So I decided to put myself into treatment. Nobody, and I'm going to mind you, and, and this is a, an interview. We're going to talk about music, but I just got to get this across. So many friends, families, and coworkers knew what, what I was going through. I literally overdosed on a park bench. I woke up surrounded by EMTs and ambulances. They had to Narcan me three fucking times. I, I, I've escaped death several times, not just because of ODs. There's been times I took, and I'll, I'll get to this in a second, but like I have almost been kidnapped. I've been locked in trunks and had no way out, no most suffocated. I've had, I've had the craziest, I've, I've fallen from three stories. I've had the craziest shit. The fact that I'm alive and that you're alive and everybody in the comments is alive. We're supposed to be here. There's a purpose. You would, people die for the stupidest reasons. And I feel like a cat that already lost seven or eight lives. Like, I ain't trying to do it no more. My last time was my last time. Okay, bottom, bottom story short. For y'all who know, I lived out here in New Hampshire for about six months last year to record research chemicals, of course, the album. And, uh, it was dope, and I've done the best I've ever done. Just smoke weed, maybe a drink here and there. Nothing crazy. I take a little medicine for my nerve damage. It's not narcotic. You know, like, good, living good, eating good, no drugs, just smoking weed. Um, long story short, I got my shit together, saved up a big stack of paper. My first stop was Vegas to record a video. Now, not only did I do a video in Vegas, but I gambled hundreds of dollars and lost i uh spent hundreds of dollars on drugs i had no business to because here's your mind's crazy my mind oh i'm on vacation i've been good i've been sober a while why not 
You know, I, I, you know, I had my ex come visit me. Everything seemed gravy. It ain't gravy. I took a, I took the rest of the Xanax I bought in Vegas, went home to see my family, obviously slumped. What was the first thing I did? I hit up the Perk dealer. Now, mind you, Perks ain't Perks no more. Perk 30s is fentanyl and fentanyl analogs pressed to look like a Roxy 30. So... You can see where this went. I had a downward spiral. That's why no one really heard from me. The people close to me know and what's up. But I'm too young, bro. I'm too young, and and that's why my next album's gonna be like the theme is gonna be brushes with death, death. People, um, uh, die for the stupidest reasons. And thank God for Yeti. Yeah, my producer, he sees my vision and he knows what I've been through. He's like, bro, because basically what happened, I ended up, my parents divorced, basically. I'm 30-something years old. I never thought that would happen. It tore me apart. I was clean at the time. I got elephant tranquilizer. I blacked out for a week. I went into houses that weren't mine because I thought they were mine because I was too fucked up. I had a lot of bad stuff happen as a result of that. I chased around an animal, a dog that I'm pretty sure wasn't real. And, uh, you know, yeah, I had a mental break. I'm only human. I had a fucking mental break. And sometimes you got to get shook to learn a lesson. I was downtown on the streets, hanging with the wrong people, and I got jumped. I got beat. I got robbed. I got uh, a lot of bad stuff happen. Bottom line is, I'm back here where I'm safe. Great town up here in New Hampshire. And not that I wouldn't be fine before, but sometimes you got to check yourself. I'm shook. I don't want to be around low-life people. I don't want to do low-life shit. I don't want to be that person. You know, it, it, sometimes when you're in music, you go to the studio, everybody's doing lean zans, fake perks. I, I don't want nothing to do with that. That's why Yeti here, not that I'm tempted. Right now, I'm doing great. But but I wasn't doing great. And for those of you who saw me for a while, I wasn't myself. Uh, but here with Yeti, I'm great. And I'm doing good. Music's coming back. I just want y'all to have a backup of, hey, if you're going through a problem, talk to somebody. A lot of these motherfuckers who say, oh, hit me up if you're having a problem, I'm there for you. They're fucking full of shit. They say that to look good, to get sponsorship. DM me. If you think you're going to relapse or hurt yourself, hit me up because I'm there for you. I've been there. I fight demons and devils every day. But you know what? I got the heart of a champ, baby. I'm a lion, right? Same with you, Uplifted. We're here for a fucking reason. And If I didn't have a past, I sure in the fuck wouldn't have a future, now would I? Now, my past is a little wild, but you know what? I have no problems with the law, no STDs, no health problems. No, I still have all my fingers, all my toes, most of my teeth. You know, I can have a good smile. Some of the ones in the back are gone, but that's normal. The main thing is, no matter how bad your life gets, Angels are there, bro. Whether you're spiritual or not, good, the universe is there for you and wants us to succeed. There's also a very intelligent evil force that wants to see mankind suffering, crying, hurting. It's not fair. That's why I love this guy on the top screen. He's a family man. He works hard. He reaches out to people. He don't judge. Here's the thing. People judge motherfuckers. You know, I try and tell people my story. Here, okay, perfect example. I'm a single man. I might try and go on a date. For one, the music act, the, the girls think I look good. The music absolutely scares them. They hear it and they're like, oh, you have a dark side. I'm like, well, it's art. It's entertainment, like a scary movie, right? Would it, wouldn't it be boring if I just rapped about cups of tea and sugar cookies? Come on, man. Right. I don't know. 
That's just the way I look at shit. And and I get it. No girl wants to end the rapper things a little corny to a lot of girls. I still ain't going to quit. I'll still work my ass off and bring home the paper. But when I got time to get my music in, the music's getting in. I only, I'm only coming back stronger. I go, what well, don't kill you, make you stronger. I have been through so many near-death experiences that I damn near got to be about the strongest motherfucker out there. Not trying to brag, but like I'm up there. I'm like I said, heart of it. You same with you, brother. Heart of a champion, fucking mind of a lion. Ain't no one gonna fucking king of the jungle, baby. And and that's the thing. Go ahead. Told people, you know, sort of like you know, the interview with like sober junkie. Like most music interviewers, you know. We'll try to stick to just the music and the music alone. You know, no real backstory of who the person actually. <coughs> right? I, I will say, I love it when people come up in here and tell their stories, especially when it comes to struggling with addiction. Yeah. 